problem I have is with the pulse width modulator. A couple problems. One, it seems to me there's there's no real width modulation, and and I've I've, I've messed around with a couple of these, and uh, it seems to me that the width modulation is just amperage, an increase in amperage. So right now it's running at. 92 RPMs, which is 20 Hertz. Um, so basically each one of those prongs, there's 12 of them on that rotor, has to go past a coil um, 20 times a second. So in, in this unit, that equates to 92 RPMs. So I would assume if I were to double the speed to 40 Hertz, you know it would go about 184 rpm not real fast but there's a lot going on there there's there's an enormous amount of back emf which is why i wanted to make this demonstration to show that uh really to demonstrate the light machine because it's going to be based on a similar concept where it it's it's all to harness the back emf wherever you can and reintroduce it back into the system so that's the idea behind this, and zoom in here. I guess I'm. So there's really only one coil hooked up right now. So in order for me to get this synced up at 20 hertz, it's it's not easy. I mean, you've got to have a delicate touch to... I've been tinkering with it long enough now that um, I can get it in a few tries. But the other problem with the pulse width modulator is the, the frequencies. They're in increments of 10 um, megahertz. So in this the concept behind this is actually... The faster it goes, the less energy it uses, but the more um, output it'll produce. So, but to get it to speed up, I've got to be able to increase the frequencies in smaller increments than 10. One would be good, e even less than that would be better. So I've got to be able to fine tune this as the speed increases and uh, adjust the pulse width, the duty cycle, um, while I'm increasing the speed. So, in fact, Tesla Tesla built a synchron, synchronous motor um, long ago. Basically, came into the same problem where he had to ultimately design two motors side by side. One, kind of like a stepper motor, to get it up to speed. And uh, when he approached the right synchron, synchronous, synchronistic speed, then the the bigger motor would kick in and and they both would run simultaneously so i i used that second coil on there to get it going because it i can make it a steady frequency if i spin it by hand it's you know there's jerking and what have you but as of right now uh I can get 20 hertz. I haven't been able to do 30 hertz. I've got a few things on the way that I think can help me get a steady speed that's close to get it to sync up. But as of right now, it's hit and miss. So every
So this is my first test with the uh, pulse width modulator, at least with this concept, and I have problems with it. A couple problems. First of all, the frequency increments are in tens, so right now it's running at 10 hertz, or I'm sorry, 20 hertz. And uh, I mean, it's great that I was able to find a modulator that had a range that went that low from 10 to 3,000 hertz. Um, the problem is, is the increments of 10. I can't fine tune it, which is what I need to do to control the speed and to increase the speed, which is where the real efficiency of this design um, lies. The faster it goes, the more efficient it is. And um, the other problem is the pulse width. So as I increase the frequency, I need to adjust the pulse width or the duty cycle. And um, this unit is supposed to have that capability. But to me, the duty cycle appears more like just an increase or decrease in amperage and not the duty cycle. So, without the ability to fine-tune the frequencies by at least one hertz per increment rather than ten, then I'm going to have a tough time getting this thing to sync up, especially at greater speeds, 40 hertz, 60, and, and beyond. Um, I'm going to try to be able to do that mechanically. I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to. Really, I'd like to be able to control it with a pulse width modulator. I don't know if anyone has got the chops to make something like that. I mean, I'm if not, I'm completely surprised. It's it's really pretty simple. The the most ideal to me for this unit um, would be infrared proximity switches that would control the pulse. Um, I think you'd really fine tune it that way, and then. Uh, it would self-adjust as it sped up. So, um, and I can do that mechanically, but again, it's not efficient. So, um, as it stands right now, I guess I've got something on the way that I think will help me get it to sync up at the right frequency. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. I, um, so basically right now it's running on one coil. Um, off a 12 volt car battery that I purchased about two weeks ago and, and haven't put a charge to yet and it it doesn't seem to have uh, diminished that much if at all um, since I've been tinkering around with this this new concept but really this also kind of dem demonstrates the essence behind what I perceive would be um, an ideal design for the best machine or Leeds Collins best machine what I call the light machine um, really I think it would be um, quite efficient to utilize something like a pulse width modulator with that design and just uh, when the essence of it is really to harness the back EMF and reintroduce it into the system I guess similar to a um, Bedini motor maybe um, I don't know. Um, I'm encouraged on some levels here and frustrated on others. I, I thought this unit here was going to do the trick, but without a um, very small incremental increase in speed, it's going to be tough to sync up. I think it can be done, but again, I think the uh, Ideally, if I could incorporate um, a DC pulse utilizing infrared proximity switches or even a laser proximity switch, um, I, I, I don't know, it's a great integration of electronics and old school mechanical design. Um, but I do think that would be ideal. I mean, it wouldn't be ideal from a in 